chairpersons and colleagues, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, my topic is extensive mechanism avulsions, uh, which involve the quads and the patella tendon. Uh, as we know, disruption of the extensive mechanism of the knee can be either bony or tendinous. The patella fractures are two to three times more common than quadriceps tendon tear, which is two to three times more common than patella tendon tear. Uh, it is also recognized that rupture of a healthy tendon is generally rare. So if we look at uh, just the quads tendon and the patella tendon uh, in isolation, uh, there are certain common risk factors. And one could divide it into either conditions which cause weakening of collagen, uh, which include SLE, RA, uh, CKD, diabetes, to name a few, hypermobility syndromes, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Marfan's, and also in patients who are undergoing hemodialysis. Uh, the second group would be those who uh, are subjected to some form of local injury, uh, but they could have an underlying tendinopathy of the patella or some sort of degeneration uh, and also possible instability. So these are the recognized risk factors for quads or patella tendon tears. So let's look at quads tendon rupture. They account for one third of uh, the extensive mechanism injuries. The mechanism is usually indirect. Uh, following eccentric quads contraction in a flexed knee. M predominantly, it's a male dominant injury and generally seen in patients who are over 40 years of age and obese. Uh, the area of the rupture is generally uh, one to two centimeters above the superior pole of the patella, which is an area of hypovascularity. Uh, when we evaluate these patients, uh, they present with uh, inability to extend the knee, but however, uh, if the retinaculum is intact, extension can be possible, but an extension lag is noted. Uh, one can also uh, feel for a palpable defect in cases of complete rupture. Uh, in looking at imaging, uh, x-rays uh, would show certain features, as you can see the top right-hand corner, uh, anterior tilt of the superior patella with the patella baha, and also superior pole avulsions. Uh, there is also uh, uh, a sign where you can see a uh, uh, loose piece from because of the quads avulsion. Ultrasonography is also uh, a useful modality, uh, but uh, MRI generally, if done, would uh, uh, identify, differentiate uh, partial versus complete tears, and also define the degree of retraction in tendon, uh, especially in uh, chronic tears or in cases of re-rupture. So when we look at management of quadriceps tendon tears, the non-operative uh, treatment would generally be advocated for uh, those with partial tears, and generally an extension knee brace is uh, applied for six weeks. Uh, I'll talk about the rehab uh, later. Uh, on the operative side, the complete tears would be an ideal indication. It's also important to address these within two to three weeks to try and prevent retraction, scarring, and compromised tissue quality. Uh, generally, when we deal with this uh, pathology, uh, the important principles, like any surgery, would be to ensure that the uh, edges are debrided and are clean. Uh, one should uh, aim for locking and grasping sutures through the tendon to try and ensure a good purchase and prevent any future re-rupture. There are a number of fixation techniques which have been used. Uh, for mid-substance tears, which is usually rare in case of quartz tendon ruptures, end-to-end -end sutures can be applied. The commonest uh, type of tear is uh, the, uh, as I mentioned, above the superior pole, and the transosseous patella drill, as you can see in the top right-hand diagram, uh, remains very popular. Off-late suture anchors uh, have been used, uh, both absorbable, non-absorbable, uh, and uh, again, the advantage is that the incisions can be minimized. Also, the, off late, there is a device where one can do these repair techniques percutaneously, but it's important to have this sort of instrument to, uh, called the PARS to try and uh, achieve that uh, repair. Uh, arthroscopic uh, repair techniques have also been applied, but there's not enough evidence in literature to try and uh, advocate an advantage over the open method. Uh, overall, if you look at literature, both the transosseous patella drill tunnels and the suture anchor methods have similar outcome, although the former appears to be a more popular uh, method of treating this problem. Uh, chronic tears and re-ruptures are challenging, and it's, the principle is to try and achieve tendon approximation. Uh, if this is possible, then primary techniques, as I highlighted in the earlier slide, uh, can be attempted. However, if it's not possible, then there are 
two techniques uh, which are described. One where you try and retract the, uh, or reinforce the, uh, the quad tendon flap to reinforce your repair. And the second is a VY plasty, uh, which is used to try and lengthen uh, in case of shortening. Also hamstring autograph augmentations uh, uh, can be used for you know, chronic tears or those uh, where the approximation is difficult, although they tend to be more popular with patella tendon tears. And um, reinforcement, if we are worried about uh, tendon fraying or uh, a, a non-compliant patient, then a reinforcement suture or a circlage wire can be added to the repair construct. So this is a patient, uh, uh, 42 years old, who had a fall from the motorbike and sustained a quartz tendon rupture in June 2021. Uh, an end-to-end -end repair was performed in another center. Unfortunately, uh, the patient developed wound infection. Uh, no organism was uh, pricked up. Uh, subsequently, in the same center, the patient underwent debridement and resuturing. This was attempted twice, uh, but from the notes, we could gather that only end-to-end -end suturing was performed. So he presented to me with a non-healing wound and signs of quartz rupture. An MRI showed a two centimeter retraction. This is his five month follow up. We did a, a transosseous uh, patella tunnel technique, which tends to be uh, quite uh, common in my case, and uh, he's, he's done well uh, in this situation. Apologies for the video not running on the right. Uh, coming to patella tendon, they account for 10% of injuries. Again, less than 40 years old and importantly, sports related. The commonest site is the inferior pole of the patella. Again, the clinical examination is important to try and not miss these. Inability to perform a straight leg raise, a palpable defect, patella alta on imaging, ultrasound and MRI are important. There are higher incidence of associated injuries unlike the quartz tendon group. Again, the management in a non-operative situation is similar. However, partial days sometimes one may consider a, a repair, especially in the active individual. Uh, again, I'll try and address these early, and the principles remain similar to the quartz tendon rupture. Similar fixation techniques, a transosseous patella tunnel technique tends to be very popular. Uh, of late, you have these internal braces, which are high strength sutures, uh, which one can use to try and reinforce the construct, and percutaneous repairs can also be done. The bottom right slide shows an AO technique, wherein you have a screw through the tibia, and then you can just railroad a, a, high, a strong suture or a circlage wire. Chronic and re-ruptures, again, try and achieve a primary repair uh, if it is approximable, but if it's not, then one has to mobilize the patella distally, which remains challenging. This can be done either single or two stage. Importantly, hamstring autographs via the patella and tibial tunnel uh, tend to be commonly used for this type of a scenario. And again, a reinforcement suture can be applied. Post-operatively, six weeks of protected uh, weight bearing, uh, and then in a brace, then start isometric cords, uh, between zero and three weeks, you progress flexion to 45 and subsequently to 90. And sporting type of activities generally start after four months with contact sports permitted at nine to 12 months period. Again, complications are very common, misdiagnosis. So uh, try and uh, uh, be uh, very vigilant about not to miss these. Failed repairs, infection, as you can see on the MRI and X-ray images is a very challenging problem. So in summary, these are disabling injuries, often requiring surgical intervention. Multiple techniques exist, but the transosseous bone tunnel technique uh, for either situation tends to be very popular and the commonly method I use. However, chronic uh, tendon tears or re-ruptures remain a difficult problem, but unfortunately, literature is not clear about the gold standard technique. Thank you very much for your attention.